I'm here with Patricia Briggs. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thank you for, for asking me to come. Not yes. a problem. Now, Patricia, you have written a huge number of fantasy novels. Yes, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, were you a reader growing up? Always, yes. I, I was the kid who brought the huge purse to high school and with five or six paperback books in it because I couldn't decide in the morning which book I wanted to read. But do you have an overall favorite of all time? Oh, no. I have. It depends on, it depends on the moment, right? It's yes. very, way too difficult. Um, maybe, maybe anything by Lois McMaster Bujold, uh, Andre Norton. Uh, Jim Butcher to kind of randomly grab people out of the ether, but yes. And how much have they influenced your work? Uh, Andre Norton a lot um, because I read her when I was so young, and she kind of set up for me what what um, what a story should be about. And for me, that's about people dealing with problems, um, heroes. And I believe heroes are incredibly common. I think heroes are the people who. Um, suck it up and keep going. You know, the, the single dad who's working a job he hates so that he can feed his kids. Mm. The single mother who um, puts aside her dreams so that she can, you know, take care, of, take care of things that need to get taken care of. Those kinds of people, I, I think they're incredibly common and I'd love to write about them. So, what sort of influenced you to start writing? Was it all of the books that you read? Was there a point where you came up with a brilliant idea and thought, I just have to put this on paper? Uh, it was a combination of several things. Um, I was in college and I had this friend who was amazing, just a really neat lady, and she had already written five or six books. She was 21, she'd written five or six books, handwritten, because that's how old I am, uh, on spiral bound notebooks. And her room were just stacks of notebooks that she had filled Did with stories. Did she do anything with them? So um, not as far as I know. Um, she sent one of them out uh, a few years later. But I just thought that would be really cool. I read all these books all the time. It would be really fun just, just to see if I could do it. And I started it and I wrote the first 10 pages over and over and over and over again. And then we moved to Chicago. And I'm from Montana, which is, I think the entire population of the state of Montana at that time was 700,000 people. And I just, I, I couldn't deal with it. So I would come in from work and I would write on this book. And about the time- escape. It was my escape um, into, into uh, the fantasy world. And I finished the book and my husband made me send it out. Um, Cause he said, well, what are you messing around with? Either submit the book or, or, or don't. And so I was polishing up for that and got uh, a letter from uh, Laura Ann Gilman, who is now a writer, yes. a very good writer, uh, but she then was a junior editor at Penguin at Ace, um, Berkeley Ace. I'm sorry, it's been eaten so many times, it's hard to go of back course. that far, right? Um, and she said, you know, send me the whole thing. So I did and she bought it. So that was cool. Well, we're so glad you did, but unfortunately we're out of time for All right. our interview. I'm here with Dean Rankin. Now, Dean, how long have you been working on Simpsons comics? I've been working on Simpsons comics for about seven years. Wow. Yeah. Um, what was your first one? What was the first thing you ever did? It was horrible. Um, uh, I sent stuff, I, yeah, I sent it like a short story, a backup story off, and it was um, Snake holding up the Quickie Mart. And I thought it was pretty good, but I look back at it now, I think, that doesn't look right at all. But the characters look off model? Oh, yeah, well, you know who they are, but they're really off model. But over the years, I've really tried to get them more on model. And I feel like after seven years, I might kind of be starting to get them on model. You don't want to rush these things, no, you know. No, 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 no. So what are, on, the, on the weekends of the convention, do you actually do, like, versions of people? Is that right? Yes, yes. So um, I draw people like they're a Simpsons character or put their heads in jars, like on Futurama. That's, that's a really flattering way of showing the person. I, I think so. I think so. Yeah, yeah. So I put people's heads in jars, and then they pay me money to do it. I was going to say, I've always kind of, I've kind of wanted to have my head put in a jar. Oh, so, so, um, what, how would you start with me? What do, you, what do you look for in a person when you're turning them into a Simpsons or a, a, a Futurama? I guess it's like that you look for certain characteristics about the person and morph it with um, the Simpsonized, Simpsons kind of characters. Okay, so, so big eyes and and would would my head fit in a jar? Definitely, definitely. It would, it would be snug. <laughs> It's a good question. <laughs> yeah, yes. Excellent. So, which being the case, um, I totally want to get that done. When can I? When can I get a head in a jar? When well, could that happen? Yeah, let's book you in for later on, okay. and we'll we'll do it. I'm very excited. Hey everyone, look at this incredible group of people that I found. Tell me why these particular characters. 
Well, my husband's been a huge Dragon Ball Z fan since he was about our son Riley's age, and so he passed on the obsession to our son. So we have Super Saiyan Goku as a child and as an adult, and then my daughter's anime obsessed, and so she's come as a little fox today. And this is her best friend, who dressed up as a kitty cat, and she also loves. And myself, I'm Merida from Brave. So. Of course, obviously. What's the matter? <laughs> I'm scared of bunnies and bunnies. Uh, <gasps> I don't blame you. I don't blame you. But you know what? You've already gone Super Saiyan, so there's nothing to worry about. Hey, I'm here talking with Nolan North. Now, Nolan, you've been in every video game ever, is that right? Uh, that is the plan, and that is correct. And any that I haven't been in yet, I uh, tend to rectify that. So. Excellent, good. Yeah. I, I really appreciate it, if you could, yeah. because I personally don't feel that I've played the video game until I've heard your voice. How did, what was your first video game that you ever played? That I ever played? Yeah. Uh, it probably was... <laughs> Yeah, I'm an old man. <laughs> I think my brother had Pong, one of the first Pong <laughs> series, uh, Pong, and, and uh, but I think uh, for me it was. I'm of the age where we would go to the arcades and you have the you know uh, Pac-Man and, and uh, asteroids and Space Invaders being uh, a, a big deal. And then when that came to the Atari console, I remember sitting in my basement and we had a we had a setup, uh, which is actually funny because recently I was at a studio and they had the new. Atari uh, system that, that you can buy okay. with all the games, and they had it on a flat screen, digital, just beautiful TV. I said, wow, I've got to see what it looks like. And it looks like the same as it was in 1979 in my basement. It Slightly just, fuzzy around the edges. Yeah, just, and it was like, I'm like, we played combat with the, that, yip, 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 you know, the tanks <laughs> with a rock in the middle. Yeah. Like, well, how do you go in terms of playing the games? Now, obviously games like Uncharted mm -hmm. and the um, Arkham Asylum games, you've, mm -hmm. you've been huge in. How do you go when you play them? Do you play them? Uh, I've attempted. I'm not very good at it, but I have uh, two, a 17-year-old and a 13-year-old sons who, who play. And uh, the older one was really into Uncharted. The uh, younger one is a big-time Destiny player. And, so am I. Yeah, I so now, you know, I'll sit down with him at the couch and, and I'll say, I think we should go right. I, I'm your ghost guardian. And, and he gets very upset with me. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm actually kind of freaked out because I have probably sunk more hours into Destiny than anything else in my life. You need is, to stop waking the hive. That's terrifying. It's a ghost. I, I, it's like I've got this small, annoying person sitting right here. You do. Yeah. That's me. <laughs> this is amazing. Oh, man. So... How did you get into gaming? Like, what, into the, into, what was your first thing that you were auditioning well, for? I think the first one I did years ago, it, it, there's one called Interstate 82, um, where somebody had just heard me do my Christopher Walken type <laughs> right, impression. So they said, wow, let's put that in our game. Um, and it was literally a Saturday. I don't even think there was a union job. And they, they, I, I thought I was going to be murdered at the Activision building because there was nobody there but these four guys. And I thought, <laughs> I've heard about this. This is what they do in LA. Right. Um, but I lived. Lure actors to die. Yeah, lure, lure, yeah, put them in a room and suffocate them. Watch them die behind glass. Uh, so but we, I mean, who hasn't done that, right? <laughs> who hasn't done that? But I think the first one I ever did, um, I remember the director was uh, Doug Carrigan, who's a good friend of mine. I worked with him to this day. Uh, he put me in uh, as the Baron in Maximo versus the Army of Zinn. And uh, I remember I had such a great time, and it was just, we, we just played and yelled, and they, they, they were like, you can yell for a long time. And I'm like, yeah, this is great. I have kids. I yell all the time. We've run out of time. Nolan, thank you so much for joining us. I have plenty of time. I, 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 look, I could keep doing this all day, but I'm pretty me? sure you've got five computer games to go on uh, voice. Is that right? Six. Six, sorry. Six. Yeah. Six. Now, um, well, wait, this is Australia. Five. Five. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a conversion rate. Yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> we buy six and we only get five. Well, that's a shame. Thank you for being my ghost. Absolutely. Eyes up, Guardian. We've woken the hive. <laughs>